Hello everyone, this is General Hand Grenade. Welcome to my war room in Prince George, British Columbia. So this video here is going to be on strategy, a particular strategy for the Japanese. This is a strategy that I learned down in Tulsa last year. It was about 11 months ago when we were playtesting version 3 and it didn't look anything like the game looks now. It was quite different. Um, but uh, um, it hasn't changed in that uh, so much that this strategy wouldn't work. So the person that was playing the Japanese that day when we were doing the playtesting was a, a really talented player, um, an awesome player. His name is Delijah. You might see his name on a few of the expansion sets. Uh, aside from seeing him in the credits of the books or that new poster, he's the Japanese guy in that poster. Uh, your Global War uh, version 3 poster. Anyway, like uh, he's done the um, the Elite of the Soviet Union and uh, a bunch of other expansions. Uh, you'll see his name on those. So anyway, really, really good player. He's from the Netherlands. Um, so <laughs> funny he's from the Netherlands because uh, he, uh, wait, wait till you see the strategy here. That's why you'll, you'll think it's uh, kind of funny like I do. So anyway, uh, this strategy is called the Dutch Panikook, and uh, you're probably wondering what the, the Dutch Panikook means. That means, uh, in English, it means the Dutch pancake, because, and <laughs> he didn't call it that or anything, I'm calling that in his honor. Uh, I'm, I'm naming the strategy in his honor, and I'm going to map it out for you, and it won't be exactly like his, it'll just be my take on that. So, what happens here? The Empire of the Rising Sun here, all of Japan, is going to come down here and flatten the Dutch like a pancake. That's why it's called the Dutch Panica, the, the, the Dutch pancake, because they're just going to pancake them. <laughs> now bear in mind, that would be like me uh, uh, just uh, destroying Canada, right? Beating them like a redheaded stepson, <laughs> you know? So it was kind of odd that he did that, but you know, it worked out really well for him. Um, so why would you do that? You know, like, uh, um, why do that instead of China? And, and we'll get into the finer details of it, but when you look at this, you look at where they are here. So imagine if you took this uh, a few years before the war even began, if this was all Japanese, well, you've got Anzac down here, right beside you. You know, like you could, you could uh, just you know, one, you're one turn away from them. Uh, you're right beside the FEC. You are one or two turns away from Africa, uh, from the uh, the Suez Canal, from busting through the Suez Canal and just making a total nuisance of yourself in the Mediterranean, Mediterranean, if you want. You've got all of this up here. Like if you were playing oil wars or something, you've got the, the Middle East up here. And there's also China, you know, like if you, if you want to go back and attack China, there it is right there. It's all right uh, from a central location here. And then your biggest competitor in the Pacific is right there, the Americans. So, you know, you're right in the middle of everybody. Over here in China, you kind of get bogged down, right? Like, uh, you, you played this game before, so you know what I'm talking about there. There's tons of Chinese units in there. Most of them are in uh, the mountains, or it seems like the, the, a lot of them are, uh, at least half of them, if not more. And so, uh, they're just soaking up your Japanese units, uh, killing them left, right, and center, because uh, they're boosted. Or, they're, sorry, they're not boosted unless they're mountain, but um, um, what I mean is your infantry and, and other units are attacking at less than they should be because they're attacking in the mountains, right? Except for the planes, of course. But um, so you can get you can get bogged down in there. You can get mired in there. And there's what uh, say uh, something like 14 or 15 IPP in there. I didn't add it up, but it's around there somewhere. Down here in these islands, these are worth nine IPP. And once you go to wartime income, there's a few of them here that uh, give you a bonus of two. And they're right beside other islands here that you can take. And Malay, like Malay gives you a bonus, although you're not gonna attack that just yet. Hawaii gives you a bonus. Um, the Solomon Islands give you a bonus. That's right here. Uh, anyway, there's lots of bonuses down here. Uh, lots of money to be taken. It's kind of like the J1 in, uh, in Global 40. Uh, oh, this doesn't belong here. <laughs> 
must have just dropped that on there. Anyway, the, there's uh, there's lots of money to be made down there, right? And uh, the resistance is a lot less. Like there's only uh, five ground units, a seaplane, and uh, and only like a, a coastal sub, a sub, and a destroyer. And it, like the transport doesn't fight, right? So I mean, there's l very very little resistance down there. Uh, um, just one infantry. That's it. The rest are militia or those boats that I told you about. And so when you think, well, you know, um, that's going to uh, be a penalty against me because of the, the peacetime income increases, right? Like these, this is the America cheat. You can ignore these marks here. I was just marking it up for Doug at Historical Board Gaming to make uh, changes on, on the sheet. But anyway, um, the, the, but the, the bonuses, if you take a good look at them, uh, it's not that different, right? So, uh, uh, like the penalty. So, if um, you were to attack China, then America would get plus five, right? Um, if you were to attack the Dutch, then uh, America you would get two D12. So that's the big difference right there. Is five versus two D12. So it could be 24. Then again, it could be two, right? It's probably not going to be either one of those. But you know, like it's it's going to be. Um, it, it, it's it, like uh, let's say it's it's just average and and make it a 12 or even a 16 so that that could be uh that could be the penalty against you as america is going to get that much added to their income and that's not too bad you know like it's it's not great but it's it's not too bad it's worse than five but it's not insurmountable because america is still a long ways away so what other ones are here so if, if uh you attack china then the uk like britain over there would get plus two IPP. But if you attacked here, you would think that they'd get lots, right? But they don't. That Britain only gets plus two IPP. Anzac. Um, Anzac, if you attack the China, plus two IPP. If you attack the Dutch, plus three IPP. FEC, plus two for China, plus two for the Dutch. So that's the same. Uh, France. France's income would go up plus one. Either way, whether you attack China or the or the Dutch, um, there is that one uh, peacetime bonus that, that Japan gets. It's changed in this game, in in version three. So before, remember, you would get uh, plus three um, for not attacking China, and then once you attack China, it would go to plus two, and then you attack China again, it'd be plus one. Well, that's the same now, regardless of who you attack. It doesn't matter who you attack you're gonna lose that bonus uh, one at a time there. So anyway, if you were to attack all these guys here in one turn, then you would only lose plus one on that bonus. Uh, so you would still be getting a bonus of plus two, right? And you wouldn't need to attack them again. And in fact, you wouldn't want to attack them again because the second time you go to attack these guys, uh, if you did, then they would be British at that point, right? So you would have to declare war on the British in order to do that. And you don't want to do that because uh, that would give the Americans plus five D12. Now, I was thinking that's what, you know, like you, the, the penalty should be heavier for attacking uh, the Dutch islands down here. That's what I told them when I was in Tulsa after <laughs> after Delijah carved me a new one, you know, doing that. Um, I think I was the UK, uh, like the Commonwealth that game. And uh, so, of course, I was heavily affected. There was nothing I could do about it because the British don't want to attack them back. They would lose that plus five IPP, right? So the Americans, uh, they, they're not going to get in the war for the longest time, right? Um, but, uh, um, so, but, but you do want to take, you only want to attack this once, though. Regardless of whether you get all of them or half of them or whatever, you only want to do the attack once and get what you can out of it. And then see where you're going to go from there. Like I showed you all the different possibilities, right? So at that point, you're going to see, you know, what did the Americans roll, right? Uh, with their 2D12s. And what are these guys doing? And what are those guys doing? And, you know, like you're pretty pretty safe. Like you could bring every boat and every, every unit you have down from Japan. There's nothing anybody can do about it. Like because the British aren't, and the Americans aren't allowed to attack uh, you. So, you know. You can leave Tokyo completely empty and nobody could attack you. The Russians could, but they don't have a transport. So if the Russians buy a transport, that's something that you need to be a little bit mindful of, right? Otherwise, carte blanche. You could just go down there 
and, and just start beating the crap out of people, right? Dutch guys. Anyway, for you, Delisha, this is the Dutch Panic Cook. Okay, it's July of 1936, and this is what you're going to purchase. First of all, the German player is going to go, then the Russian player is going to go, and none of that makes any difference to you. Nothing anybody does in this game can stop you from doing this. Well, hardly, anyway. There, there's one small hiccup that can happen. It still can't stop you from doing this. It, it, it could just kind of irritate you, but even then, it's, it's pretty uh, not very likely. So you start with 16 bucks here, right? Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to buy a Marine, a Special Navy Landing Force, and two infantry. And I'm going to save a dollar because that's going to cost me 15. So there we go. Now, um, you don't have any attack moves, but you don't have to tell them that just yet. Uh, what you, what you want to do is you want to take a look at the Chinese guy, right? The, or not the Chinese guy, but the Chinese player, right? You look at him and you give him a couple head fakes, right? Like, like you're going to jump him or something. <laughs> and then you raise your hand up really fast like you're going to smack him. And then you just calmly scratch your head. You know, get him a little twitchy and stuff. Make him nervous, right? And then uh, say, I don't have any attack moves. And <laughs> so my non-combat moves, and that's when you uh, start your non-combat moves. So let's just come down here. I want to show you something. I got a couple of task force markers here because it's going to get pretty crowded in the island of Formosa. So this is Formosa right here, right? So let's just take this plane here and put it uh, on the... There's a task force, mar force marker for the land and there's a task force marker for the sea here. Um, these things are not going to be here, um, but we won't move them until later because we don't want to get them mixed up with the other ones that are up top there. Uh, but this task force marker, uh, we're, we're going to put all our boats over here that we want to bring down there. So let's just go up to the other side over there. Now, uh, hmm, where's a good camera angle? Let's squash the Mongolians here. Uh... Yeah, I think we can see everything from there. Okay, so what I'm going to do, uh, we're going to load up uh, three transports. So we're going to take the first transport from this side of Japan, right? And we're going to take this guy, and we're going to take the guy in Tokyo. Ooh, doo -doo -doo -doo. And we're going to spill everything everywhere. Godzilla! Oh no, it's Godzilla! So we're going to take them with this transport here. We're going to go down to the, to Formosa there. So we'll put the transport there. These guys are going to go on Formosa. So we will just stick them on Formosa here. Alrighty. Uh, we'll take one of these transports here. And we'll go down to Formosa as well. And with that, we're going to take the guy from Korea and this guy over here. And we're going to put them on Formosa. And then... And then... And then we've got one more transport here. We're going to take that one down to Formosa. And we're going to take these two dudes here. Can you see the guys in Rihi there? Uh, let's move this back. Okay, so these two guys right here in Rihi. Those guys are coming. So, we're going to put those guys on Formosa. Everybody's having a party in Formosa. Now, uh, let's just pause it right there and talk about... Um, what you might be worried about here right now. Saying, well, what are you doing, you know? Like these guys could, uh, look at, look at this right here. See this territory, this territory, the two territories that are touching Rihi, those are both Chinese warlord territories, right? So, uh, they can't affect you. They can't, they can't attack you, right? Um, they're not the KMT. They're not the CCP. This is, uh, they do consider this as part of China and China, uh, the Chinese can attack into here, but um, they're not going to because uh, they're warlords, right? Now, the only thing, like if the Chinese player was smart the, or the Russian player, the common turn player, let's put it that way, then what the common turn player could do is uh, they could, uh, they could attack, say this one, like there's three of there's three territories here. They all belong to the same warlord. So in the new rules, what happens is if you attack a warlord, um, then then the rest of the warlords go to the other uh, the other faction. Uh, so they would go to the KMT, right? Um, the other thing that you could do instead of doing that is you could try to influence them. 
So you would roll the dice for how many territories you have. Now you won't have one territory as the CCP. So you could roll one die or you could purchase other dice for uh, uh, one IPP per, per dice, right? So you've got two dice. You could roll at three or less to try and um, influence these three warlords into joining your side. Um, and that's, uh, I believe that's at the end of your turn. Let me just check on that. I don't want to say the wrong thing here. Okay, yeah, so that's what I thought. So um, if they try to influence, um, they could try to influence one of the warlords that is bordering the CCP territory. And if they do, then all of those territories belonging to that particular warlord would align to the CCP. But that's not until the um, the place units phase. So basically the attacks are already over. So if they tried to align these guys, they wouldn't do it. And then you would know that that was going to happen. But even then, it's not that big a deal. Like, it doesn't matter if you lose Rihi. Uh, you don't want to, but I mean, it, it really doesn't matter that much, and you'll see why. So you're not worried about them. You're not worried about the Russians, because the Russians aren't allowed to attack you. Not until 1939. There's nothing they can do to you, right? So, you know, who gives a crap about the Russians? What I would do, uh, because the Russians can't attack you, but it's possible that these guys can, is uh, move that... Uh, the motorized infantry down there move the the cavalry down there since russia can't attack you anyway take these two dudes and put them in korea they're going to go down and, and take part in the, the dutch panic hook but not until the next turn right because they're not on the water right now so there's no way you could pick them up this turn so anyway you've, you've picked up all the units that you could up here and you've moved them all down to um to uh, Formosa there. So we've got one transport left here. Plus we've got another transport here. So let's bring that guy up. Let's bring uh, up this destroyer over here as well. We'll put these things here that we want to keep up here. We want to keep the destroyers back because Japanese destroyers are just about the best unit in this game. Believe me. Uh, you can uh, use them as a destroyer and destroyers have considerable uh, uh, abilities um, or you can use them as a transport right so uh, you're gonna keep them up here to, to take down the next wave of guys in fact it's these guys here that you're gonna go down there with so uh, then um, let's move down Let, let's move down again to the other side okay so where are we here let's, uh, I don't want to squash too many guys here this goes a lot. Okay, so let's bring down this guy here. He can go threes at a naval base. So one, two, three. Like he can go as far as he wants, right? Doesn't even matter. You don't even have to disguise what you're doing. But if you wanted to, you could. Because here there's a major naval base. You go one, two, three. So let's just put everybody on Formosa there. Um, that, that we can. Put everybody on Formosa. And that way, you know, unless they watch General Hand Grenade videos, they won't know what's going on. They're thinking, oh no, they're coming after Calcutta. Or, you know, like they just don't know, right? So we're going to put everything we can from up here into there. Here, I'll move this over so you can see what I'm doing over here. So I'm just uh, I'm just making a big, a big stack here. Now this guy... We're not going to bother with him. He doesn't have that much range, so we'll leave him there. But we've got a couple of subs there. We can definitely bring them down. Uh, so there they go. We've got another heavy cruiser. Um, I think that's about it. Uh, we don't need to move anybody else down. Uh, but we can move these guys down, right? Um, uh, yeah. That's right, yeah, we want to move those guys down, but they're going to go on the land because they don't have uh, a carrier to land on. So let's move those guys all down. And there we go. So that's everybody there. We've moved everybody we can to Formosa there. And we haven't really tipped our hand yet. Like, you know, it, it's a good guess that we're coming down here. That's what I would guess, but you never know. It could be over there. It could be you do this one time, and then the next time you go that way, right? Who knows? 
Anyway, so uh, there's that. Um, anything else? We got the three destroyers up there. We got the two transports left up there. Um, that's good. And uh, we've got a couple boats here. We don't need to move those. We'll just leave them here. They, they don't need to. They don't need to go to Formosa. Okay, so that's uh, that's the end of our non-combat move. So let's just put our crapola on. Um, it doesn't matter which. Uh, uh, I guess it does matter which factory we put them on. So um, let's put one transport over here instead, okay? Because then we'll put two of the guys on Tokyo because Tokyo doesn't uh, isn't on the left coast over there or the west coast of Japan. So two of the guys going in Tokyo and two of the guys going down here and uh, we've got all this stuff here. There we go. Beauty. Okay, so that's the end of our turn and guess what? We didn't attack anybody so the Americans are so happy with us they're gonna give us a bonus. So we got a bonus of three IPP. Um, plus, we saved a buck, right? So uh, 16, 17, 18, 19. There we go. We've got 20 bucks now, right? And there it is. 20 bucks. That's to use for our second turn. So let's get to our second turn. All right then. So it's, it's January of 1937. Hitler's making an ass of himself in Europe and uh, not making any friends. <laughs> the Russians and the Germans are both engaged in the Spanish Civil War, uh, fighting over the, the meager points that are available for that conflict. Uh, they're not really thinking about anything in the Pacific at this point um, at all. Like the Russians can't attack you and um, the Germans, they're on your side, right? So. It's your second turn. Most most people have only had one turn. Uh, they've barely gotten their feet wet. All the incomes are very low. Uh, so nobody's done much of anything. This is what you had. 20 IPP from last turn. So uh, we're going to buy two destroyers and two infantry. So uh, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to do another head fake. <laughs> this time we'll look at, at the guy from Calcutta. You know the, the the commonwealth guy because when you look at this right you, you look here uh there's a, a major naval base there you can go one two three and you don't have to worry about these boats here because even though they're in your way you're not at war with them so you can go one two three and then declare war <laughs> so you know like you can attack the fec so you, just, you look at them and you, and you, you point at it and you <laughs> and then you and then you don't do it right just to freak people out you know so uh what are we going to do then um, well, we've got two transports up there, right? So we're going to take, uh, here, let's uh, find a spot for this thing here, uh, right there. So we're going to take the transport from here, and we're going to bring the two dudes down. I had to reset this, so I'm not sure I, I got, grabbed the right dudes. Like, I, I screwed up this turn, so I'm, I'm just redoing it now. I might have the, the different dudes, but it's, it, it's set up basically the same, okay? Uh, so we, we took those down. We've got this transport over here. And we're also going to take that to Formosa. And we're going to take uh, one of these dudes and one of these dudes and the dude that's there. So, um, so there's that. Now, um, you know what we'll do? Uh, uh, just for a little added defense over here. Let's take the guy, the, the, the guy that's left on Korea and let's put him right there, okay? Um... Just for a little bit of added defense. And then there's a couple more things to do that are really important. First of all, um, we need to understand that there's there's no defense happening here for the Japanese. Uh, a fighter is better on defense than a tactical bomber, but a tactical bomber is much better on offense, and we only need offense. So we have a couple of carriers here uh, up in Formosa, right? Uh, this one has a a tactical bomber and a fighter on it. So we're going to take that fighter and we're going to fly him. Here, let's take the tactical bomber off. We're going to fly the fighter up to Rihi here. It depends. Like if, if, uh, 
if these guys are, are mobilized, right, like if uh, the, 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 these guys manage to get them, then maybe not, right? But as it is right here, looking at that right now, I'm going to fly that fighter up there. So there's, there's that tactical bomber. So we're going to move him down to here now, right? Um, what's that C-Zone called? C-Zone 122. That's the one that surrounds Sumatra here. And Sumatra has an air base, which is really cool. Um, so then uh, we also have a light carrier. This one here that, that, that's in here. So let's do the same thing with that. Let's, let's take a... Let's take it like this, and we'll, we'll also put that one up in a reheat here, just for a little bit of added defense, because we don't need any defense anywhere else, right? That's the only place we could possibly need defense at this point in the game, and and uh, even then, we're, we're really not too worried about those guys. Uh, so then we're going to bring this down here. Again, we're going to put that in C-Zone 122, where Sumatra is. Um, and... That's about it. Like, I would say, geez, we should put something else in there. But, you know, like, it would be crazy for the British to attack that. But, you know what? They could do it, though. So, just in the interest of self-preservation, let's take, uh, there's a couple subs in there. Also in, in Formosa, up here. Let's bring those down. And let's bring those in to soak up any hits. If uh, the British ever did decide to go after those carriers and um oh what the hell let's put the battle cruiser in there too the congo class battle cruiser we'll put that in that in that zone as well just in case the uh the the fec gets frisky on us and i think that's it that's basically all we need to move right uh, oh no that's not it sorry we've had we've got the three destroyers up there so we are going to take them and we are going to move them to formosa there we go. So everybody's at Formosa there, except for the two carriers, the three tactical bombers, um, and a couple of other boats as well. Hey, you know what? Let's put a light cruiser in there too. They're small. Make it look ominous. Get everybody scared. There we go. And so that is the end of our turn, except we have to put our stuff on. So we got the two destroyers. And it doesn't matter, we could put them on either side because they're going to be able to reach where we want to go um, either way. And we're going to put the two dudes on. Those two dudes can be carried by destroyers, right? Now, you might have seen there that I, uh, that I took these destroyers down without anybody on them. And there's a reason for that. Um... Let me just count up what we got here. So 2, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So we've got 11 infantry. We've got five transports. Um, and then if we use one of the destroyers, then that's going to transport them. The other two destroyers, if you remember the V3 rules, if you've read them yet, um, the, when we go after submarines, there's a submarine here and a submarine here for the Dutch. When we go after submarines, we can pair our, um, our, our carrier-based aircraft with a submarine, uh, or sorry, with a destroyer to attack a submarine. So that gives us an extra shot. Like if we miss that first shot, then those submarines can, can dive, right? Um, but with the destroyer, that gives you an extra shot at four. So hopefully you get them. Like we're going to be able to shoot at them with a, a tactical bomber. But uh, we'll also get a, a destroyer. So that's why uh, we did not load up those destroyers. We could have, like there was, there was two units left, right? Like we had this unit over here that we could have brought down with, uh, with a transport. And there's uh, that infantry that I moved over there. We could have brought him down um, with, uh, with a, a destroyer. So we could have brought all that stuff down. But... We we uh, we need we do need those destroyers because we do want to take those subs out. Anyway, it's uh, time to get to the last turn. Move the calendar to July, and let the pancake start. Okay, so now it's July of 1937. Um, the war is still going on in Europe, uh, just in Spain, and people are moving stuff around. Again, people most people have only had two turns, 
and they've hardly bought anything because their incomes are so low. Uh, everybody in Southeast Asia and the South Pacific are, are shitting their pants right now because of uh, the orange horde that you've moved south. They don't know who the target is. It could be Calcutta. It could be Anzac. It, it could be it could be the Netherlands. They're thinking probably the Netherlands, but you can't. You know, you don't know for sure. They could turn around and come back to China. I mean, it's it, it could go any way, right? So everybody's worried. They're, they're not sure who's gonna who's gonna get it, but somebody's gonna get it, and it's going to happen this turn. It's time to do some flapjacks. So uh, we got uh, what 18 bucks or no 19 dollars for income. Now. Uh, this isn't part of our plan. This is just like we've got everything we need to do what we're going to do. Uh, this is what, what's going to happen next. And so I thought, okay, why not buy a light tank? We haven't put anything on Rehi yet. There's a, a, a small complex there. So I bought a light tank and I bought a militia because I can put them both in Rehi, right? Now this one, uh, then also um, to reset search technology, uh, it, you get one die per uh, every major complex or major factory that you have, right? And so uh, Japan has only got one, so they've actually only rolled the dice twice. Everybody else is rolling the dice probably more than that, but Japan only twice. So we've got this medium factory here, cost us six IPP to upgrade that to a major, and we've got uh, and we've got two other spaces here. There's this space here, and there's this space outside of Tokyo that we can put uh, a major on. So I thought, why not uh, do it started early in the game? So this thing here would go on over here. I, I tell you, it's too bad we, we didn't have enough money at the start of the game to bring this carrier over because that would have really helped. Um, amphibious assaults are difficult. Uh, so anyway, we, we've got the two major complexes and the two units that are gonna go on Rehi there. Now, Let's get to it. Okay, we've got to do things in a specific order here because it matters and I'll show you why. So everybody in the pool is up here in Formosa. Now we can get down here. There's a new thing called screening force so you can fight somebody and then keep going, right? But we don't need to do that because we're not at war yet. But we have to make sure we do it in the right order. We do, we're not going to declare war on the Netherlands right now. What we're going to do is we're going to move the units down here that we need. So um, let's take let's take a battleship down there. Um, wait a minute. Let, let's put together our screening force first. Like we do have to have screening forces to take care of the boats before we get onto the land. So let's let, let's just do that first. Um, what I want to do, I'm going to bring these two submarines over that we had put into uh, Sumatra there. Here, let me just back this up a little bit. There we go. So the two submarines that are in Sumatra, let's, let's just put them in this zone here, okay? There we go. Um, so there's two subs there. Uh, what else? Um, just for a screening force, right? Uh, let's, let's uh, you see these guys up in, in Caroline Islands here. Let's move that guy down. So he can go four, one, two, uh, one, two, three, four. Yeah, he can make it there. So that's going to be there against the, the boats. Um, and then, of course, we're going to bring the destroyer down, right? Because we're going to, we want to go after that submarine. But we're not going to go on combat air patrol yet. That would be in a combat move, right? So we don't want to do that because we want to get everybody by that we want to get by first. So now up here, we're gonna to have to have a destroyer, aren't we? So we're bringing a destroyer down into here uh, for this battle. And let's bring the sub over from the Caroline Islands as well. Now we don't need much because all they have there is a, um, a coastal sub. If they had, if they had a, a seaplane base, they could scramble this seaplane. But as it is, their seaplane is going to do nothing for them because the only thing seaplanes can shoot at are subs and transports, and it's sitting on the land. It's it's just gonna it's just gonna die a horrible death <laughs> sitting on the land there, right? He's not even going to get to fight. So we've got uh, we've got enough stuff here when we put in in our planes on combat air patrol to take these out, and I believe to take these out as well, right? 
I think that's more than enough. We want to save the big hitters, the battleships and the battle cruisers, for um, for the bombardment shots, right? So let's move these ones over here. Uh, this is going to be the amphibiously assaulting force. So we'll we'll take a battleship there. Uh, let's take a, let's take both battleships here because there's three units here. There's really only one here because the seaplane doesn't count, does it? Um, and then we're only taking two two units into this one. So up here, let's put two cruisers in. The two cruisers are going to get bombardment shots. And we've still got two more shots we can take down below there. So let's take uh, let's take the light cruiser and the heavy cruiser. There we go. So these four are going to take land shots after these ones take the boats out. Uh, these two are going to take land shots after these ones take the boats out. These ones don't have to take boats out, so they're going to take land shots. Um, now, have we got everybody by that we need? Yes, we do. So now we can, oh, wait, we, we don't, we don't. <laughs> oh, sorry. So we need to bring two transports down over here with, uh, let's take this guy. Can you see that here? Let me just move that back a bit. So th this is the, the, the landing force. This is the screening force. So there's that guy. Uh, two dudes. And what? What else? Um, let's make it three dudes, okay? And then over here, we're going to take a transport and we want to take the marine because uh, we, we really want this air base over here um, so let's take this one over here and this guy so there's the two units and then we have got two more transports so hmm you know what? Let, let's take this guy over here instead with the with the one transport. There, we'll put that transport up here, and then let's put two transports over here, and we'll take four guys in there. That's what we're gonna do. So now, let's let's declare combat now because we've got everybody by this but this guy that we want. So now we don't have to worry about attacking these things before moving on. So now we're going to declare combat. And see, that would work as well. As I mentioned a bit earlier, if you wanted to go against Calcutta, you go you go past them first and then you declare combat, right? But anyway, we just did that. So now, remember those two destroyers that we had up there, right? So, one, two, three, four. There we go. And... We came down and we just took these, this one and this one. We're not going to worry about this one because it's not worth anything. So let's just not waste our resources, right? So we've already taken those ones because we've already, oops, not that one, this one. We've already declared combat. So there we go. There's that one and there's that one. Now, uh, now with the other ones, um, these battleboard markers are great. Uh, you get a set of these uh, battle board markers, and, and it's really good because you can, um, you see how it, how difficult it is to see, like you're wondering, is that mountains there, or what's under there? Now, this used to be mountains, I'm pretty sure, but I took a good long look at it, and it doesn't look like mountains anymore. It just looks like jungle. So what we can do is we can just put a jungle marker in there, uh, just to remind ourselves that the jungle rules apply. Um... And that's not going to mean much for what we're doing. Also, with our with our guys that are going in, we can put these markers in. They say uh, uh, amphibiously landing, so we know that you know there's double casualties on those, and you know like uh, uh, that uh, only infantry go on the first round. So we we know those kind of things, right? Because of those markers. And then there's also there's first strike markers. Uh, but it, because there's destroyers going in against these subs, 
um, they, they're not going to have first strike. And there's also a destroyer here with this sub. And so he's not going, to, uh, so they're not going to get first strike. And with this sub over here going against this one, he can't attack that. Um, he can't attack that sub, right? So, uh, oh, so what we have to do is go on combat air patrol. So we're going to go there and we're going to go there. We're going to fly this guy over into here to attack that sub with the destroyer. And we're going to fly this guy over to attack these guys with the destroyer and with the other units that can attack the destroyer. And this guy here, because this, this land mass here has a bit more on it, we can go uh, one, two, three, four, and land back on there. So we're going to go at the land with this, with this uh, tactical bomber here. And so we know we can go two more spaces. So we'll just put that marker there. We know that uh, the only one, like uh, we know the guys that are on combat or patrol can only go one space. Uh, we already know that. So we don't have to change it, right? Or we don't have to put one of these markers down. They only go one. But this guy here, we can't fit it in there, but he goes two. And I think that's just about it. Like uh, we do have two more guys there. Um, oh, right, that's not it, sorry. Um, there is one more thing. So there's this guy. You know what, let's, uh, let's put this guy on here like that. Or wait a minute, let's go like that, sorry. So I've got two guys left and I've got one destroyer. And he's up in Formosa here. So he's coming down one, two, three. We can go right through the American there because we're not at war with America, right? So he comes down here, takes that, no problem. And we put that marker on there. So we've already gained $3. Now we gotta go after the heavy ones. So, should we roll this? Should we? Huh, huh, huh? Why not? Okay. So this is pretty easy. Um, uh, what, what can I do here? Let's put this over here and this over here so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so uh, let's go for up here. So we've got, um, we've got to take out, we've got to use the screening force first. And we have a tactical bomber and um, a destroyer. So the tactical bomber is going to be yellow. The destroyer is going to be blue. The tactical bomber hits on a seven. It's got a target selection, which doesn't matter. Uh, in this case here because there's only one combat unit to hit there So they did hit it. So that's the sub gone Now the sub does get to return fire. So let's roll for that sub there two uh, Geez, I forgot what the Defense value for that sub was uh, let's take a look here coastal sub Two, okay, so he got a hit so that sucks. He got her destroyer, but at least we got them out of there. You might be wondering why I put the carriers next door instead of putting them in there. That's because if, if either one of those subs rolls a one, then you can bet your bottom dollar, if you're the Japanese player and I'm, I'm playing the Netherlands, I'm taking your carrier because your guys aren't, aren't going to have, your planes aren't going, going to have anywhere to land. You just took these territories and you, have, you can only go one space, right? So by damaging your carrier, that means your planes are gonna fly into the ocean. Uh, they can't land on a damaged carrier. That rule has been changed since version two. Uh, before on version two, you could land, land on a damaged carrier. In version three, you cannot, all right? Uh, so uh, because we killed the sub, then that also auto kills this guy here because we do have units left. Uh, so now, um, the amphibious assault begins and we have two cruisers. So, uh, we look on here and see these things here, uh, the, the shell looking things. Those are the things that, that tell you what you shoot at for, um, from bombardment, right? So where's our cruiser? He should be at six here, heavy cruiser. So he, he gets to roll a two or less. And it is um, it is first strike if you if you do if you hit with your bombardment. So if they get a two or less with either one of these die, then that militia is gone. 
and they missed. So we got to keep fighting. So now we have a Marine and we have, I was wondering where that guy was. There shouldn't be an extra guy up here. Sorry about that. This guy, this, this guy that I left up there, I was wondering why is there an extra guy? I, I thought I counted it out right. So there, he, he's on there. Um, now with jungle, uh, if we were using some kind of mechanical piece, whether it was motorized infantry, mechanized infantry, or tanks of some kind, uh, those things would get minus two in jungle. But we're only using infantry. This does not affect infantry at all. It, it, uh, it also, the, the jungle would limit your, your uh, movement to one or, instead of two if you had a thing that went two. So we're not worried about that at all, are we? Uh, we're just dropping onto, uh, onto the land there. Uh, anyway, so we've got two at two. And we missed. And then they've got one at two. And that's a seven he missed. So we got two at two. And we got a hit. And they've got one at two. And that's a miss. Now if they would have if uh if they would have hit us on the second round, we would have chosen to lose the infantry instead of the the um marine, right? Because uh that would have been the second round. Now this guy doesn't fight, so my understanding of the rules is that this is just going to be an auto kill, like a transport was just a minute ago, right? Because he can't fight, uh, he can't he can't shoot at, at what we have uh, there, so uh, I don't see how he could could get us. Uh, I'll let you know if that changes, but I'm pretty sure that that's just an auto kill. Anyway, so there we go. We got another spot there. So let's go down. We've got uh, the screening force down here. We have. Uh, tactical bomber and a uh, destroyer again going after that uh, going after that sub and we got two misses ooh that's no good um, and then um, we've got two subs and a light cruiser so the two subs are red the light cruiser is green okay we got a hit with the sub and uh, uh, a hit with the light cruiser. So we got two hits. So this is an obvious uh, choice for the guy, uh, for the Netherlands player, right? He's going to choose to le lose the destroyer. Uh, he does get to shoot with the destroyer though. So, um, but he's going to, um, instead of fighting back with this guy, he's gonna submerge, okay? So let's just uh, shoot back with the destroyer. And he got a three. So let's get rid of one of the subs here. Okay. So that was interesting. We left them with a sub. Um, but we should be okay with that because uh, we our carriers are out here, but we still have two other units out here as well. Um, so the, our carrier shouldn't be at risk with with the two subs or with the with the one sub here. I mean, you can't go after somebody else, I guess. Um, but anyway, here we go. Uh, so now we go after the land. We have a light cruiser, and a light cruiser is only a one. So we need to hit a one for a light cruiser, and that's a miss. And then we need a two for a heavy cruiser. That's a miss. And then we need fours for the battleships. Would really be good if we if we were able to hit one or two here. So that's a that's a, a one. So that's one hit. So obviously they'll want to take the militia off, and that is a first strike hit. So that militia does not get to fight. Uh, he goes back here. Okay. So uh, now we go with um, three infantry. Okay. The infantry are going to be red. The tactical bomber is going to be yellow, and. The Special Navy Landing Force is going to be green. And so that's a hit. Just one hit. So he's going to want to take the militia off. So he's got one at two and one at four. Uh, we'll take uh, the yellow one's going to be at two and the red one's going to be at four. So two misses. We got lucky there. Now we do it again. Same dice. Uh, wait a minute. 
Well, not this dice. <laughs> we had too many. Anyway, these are the ones that we had before. Um, that is, um, that's one hit there. And that's all we needed was the one hit. It's also a targeted hit, but it doesn't matter because all he had left was one dude, right? So whether it was a targeted hit or not, we got him. So that pie comes off and ours goes down. Now we've got, oops, sorry about that. Now we've got this one left over here. Um, we've got a light cruiser and a battle cruiser to take the, bow, the, to take the landing shots. And uh, that's it. So I always try to get the, like I've got lots of different colored dice. I always try to get the colored dice that I'm using. So I've got green on the light cruiser and I've got purple on the battle cruiser. So that's, all, that's what these guys are. Again, first strike, be great if we hit them. No hits. Okay, so then we have four dudes. Just four dudes, and they're at two. And we doubt we got them. We got one, two. So then we'll roll them. They have one at two. And the missed. Okay. So there we go. There's that. And we get to put our pie down there. So we just gained nine bucks, didn't we? Now we have to just fly these things back. Now these guys can, can only go back to the carriers, right? This one here, uh, this one here, and then this guy that was on the land here, he can go two, so one, two, back onto a carrier. There we go. And these things are off now. These guys are all on the land. Uh, oops, that guy's up there. Okay, so there it is right there. Now I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna clean all this up and then we'll come back and we'll talk about what, what happens next, okay? Okay, so that's what it looks like now. Now let's talk about the aftermath and, and perhaps what that happens next. Actually, I might as well take this guy off. Don't really need that anymore on Formosa since uh, everybody found a party to go to. There we go. Okay, now, um, well, first things first, Japan just collected uh, an extra nine. But before we do that, let's just, uh, while I got these dice in my hand, let's just roll these. So one of the things that happens uh, when the Japanese take out um, uh, a neutral country is that Japan gets 2d12, or sorry, America does. So there's a seven and this is a nine. That's a really good roll there. So they got 16. So let's take a look at this. So America now gets 16. They went from six to 22. That's not insurmountable. It's only the third turn, right? And you know, they, they might've gotten money from something else. Although that's the only thing they've gotten from Japan. Um, they might have got something from, but probably not. Like there's not much else happening. It's mostly Japan that they're worried about, right? And okay, so uh, the UK, it goes plus two, big deal. Uh, Anzac goes plus three, where are they? So they go up to a whopping $6. Uh, FEC goes up plus two, so they're up to seven now. And France goes up one. We there we go. <laughs> so that's all that happens. Nothing happens with Russia. Um, so then Japan goes up nine, so it goes up to twenty-five, right? Plus they still get two two bonus for the oil from the Americans because they've only attacked one country once, right? And so they still get uh, three minus one, which is two. So they're going to collect. 27 IPPs this turn. Um, anyway, we've also got our stuff to put on. There's nothing else to move because there was nobody else that uh, needs to move. Uh, the Russians still can't attack us. It's, it's still too early in the, in the game. So we'll just put these two guys on reheat like that. Uh, we'll take off this complex here and put this one down. And this one here, um, actually we should uh, grab ourselves a construction ship here. There we go. 
I think we should put it here rather than up north there because it'd be easier to protect from here. Um, there we go. So um, this, we still don't get a die for that when it comes to rolling the die. And we, we, don't get, we don't get to roll for this one this turn, but we will get to roll for it next turn at the start of our turn. But again, we still won't get to roll for this one until the other complex is finished. So uh, next turn, if we pay six IPP, then we'll move it to here. And then the next turn, if, if it, uh, we'll pay six IPP and we'll move to here and go on the board at the end of the turn. Um, so these guys here, what did we say we we're going to collect? 27, right? So there we are, 27 bucks. That's good for us. Now, what can we do? What can anybody do? You see here that uh, the British are nowhere close to being able to declare war. Now they've probably gone up to uh, from what Germany's have. So let's say they're up to 15 now um, because Germany would have taken, uh, wait a minute, there's been three. So Germany would have taken three places so they'd be up to 16. They're still not up to the point where they can declare war. So they can't even declare war on these guys, um, even if they wanted to. But if they wanted to, the problem with doing that is that they're going to lose that uh, 5D12 for the Americans. Because if the Japanese attack the British, then the Americans get 5D12. If the British attack the Japanese, then the Americans don't get anything for that. And um, the big key in this game, if you're the Allies, is getting America into the war, right? That's a big, big, big part of this game if you're the Allies, is getting America into the war. And if you're not the Allies, a big part of your game is keeping the Americans out of the war. So having that in mind, um, you, you think about what's next. Okay, so let's say you only rolled, say, three with those. Remember I just rolled 16 with the Americans? What if I only rolled three? Um, then they'd still be way back to somewhere around 10, right? Nine or 10 bucks. Um, they'd be long, long ways away from, from going to war. You could maybe give them 5D12, you know? Like you could think about taking everybody that you've got here. Did we even lose any men? I don't think we lost a man down here. We lost a couple boats, but we didn't lose any men. So we could keep going. We could keep going up to Calcutta. We could keep going down here to to uh, Anzac. We, we could maybe even do both of them. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> there's a major base here. So we could go one, two, three. No, nope. one, two, three. No, nope. well, we could uh, we could land on Australia, but we couldn't attack Sydney this turn. Um, we could certainly attack the FEC on this turn if we wanted to. Now that's going to give the American 5D12. That's one thing we could do is, is to go after the Commonwealth. Another thing we can do is uh, just start uh, just start going nuts, right? We could just uh, start sailing over this way, start taking over Africa if we wanted with the, with the, with the guys that are here. We've still got five transports. We've got, uh, what is it, four, three. Yeah, we have four destroyers and five transports and we, we haven't lost any any units and nobody has the ability to put any units on there to take them away from us <laughs> so that's something we can do another thing we could do is we could take these guys now and we could go like one turn is one two like their, their transports only go two right so one two we could go back to formosa these guys got a major thing uh naval base so they can go one two three uh, again, they can still go through the Americans' territory. They can go through these guys because they're not at war, right? They could take everything they have here and take it all back to Japan up there if they want. Except what I would do if I did that is leave all the guys down here. And then you can buy militia, right? So uh, these three spaces here, that one, that one, and that one, all three of the ones that are worth two here, those are worth points at the end of the game. And it's really, really hard to do an amphibious assault in this game, right? So if you started put, you can only, uh, uh, um, well, anyway, you could put a militia on e each turn, right? Um, say you only put two militia or three militia on these three places for from now till the rest of the game. 
that'd be extremely difficult to take those three points back from you. In fact, you could keep those points as long as you wanted if you kept putting Militia on. And also with Militia, you can also upgrade them as well, right? For two IPP, you can upgrade a Militia to um, uh, an infantry if it's in the supply path. And I don't see your supply path being broken between here and Japan, right? You, you should be able to have a supply path that's open for at least most of the game. Late in the game, who knows, right? But I'd be inclined to do that as I look at this right now. It is that this uh, all, that's almost a guaranteed three points for you, and and you know like if you played this game a number of times, um, three points isn't isn't shooting lights out, but that's three out of seven possible points for the Japanese. That's not bad if your if your uh, your teammates, the Italians and the Germans, are having a similar type game, then you're coming in close to eight or nine points. That's uh, that's pretty close. Like if Germany has a better game, then you can get better. But I mean, you've had a great start, so you can even improve that. Like taking Malay or uh, Philippines or the two French territories down there, those are also worth a point. But you can only get four of those. So you've already got three of them. You could get one more. So taking any one of those three places before the end of the game and holding it, or even just taking it on the last turn, you know what I mean, and holding it, that's worth uh, that's worth four points. Uh, then there's another one with uh, if you have 50 points or more or 50 IPP or more, then um, in your income plus bonuses, then that's worth a point. And there's another one owning groups of stuff, groups of islands and stuff. That one, or it's either that or more capital ships than the Americans. That's also worth a point. But it's tough to win that one. Uh, the Americans have a lot of money and. Um, they can probably outspend you on that. But you've got a pretty good start there. So what I'm thinking is, um, you, you bring those up to Formosa, that's one turn. You bring them up to, uh, then you go from Formosa, you look here, Formosa's right here. It's got a major naval base, so one, two, three. You can attack China if you wanted, you know? Like you've got f all those transports, all those destroyers, and so, um, you've got lots of money right now, $27? Yeah, 27 bucks in your jeans right now. You could buy nine infantry if you wanted, or you could buy a bunch of uh, Marines if you wanted, right? You've got lots of planes um, to support you. You could bring some of those guys back from, from the Dutch islands if you wanted. Uh, I wouldn't bring them all though, I'd leave some down there. Like I said, it's, it's pretty, pretty sweet if you could put a few militia down there. It'd be tough to lose those points after that, uh, um, between now and the end of the game. But, you know, like you could bring your whole Navy back here and then just prosecute your game after that. Like you're only three turns in and you've gained nine IPP. You're still getting a bonus of two IPP from the Americans and nobody's able to touch you. Nobody can, they can't even look sideways at you. Like, so you know, we're all avoiding contact. And so that, my friends, is the Dutch Pannekoek, the, the Dutch pancake. So anyway, take care everyone. General Hand Grenade out.